Hey guys, welcome to Vegan Booty Talks, and I am having a special guest with me today. She's IBB Pro, and she competed in Science 2014. She began weight training and competing after becoming vegan in December of 2012. After 12 NPC shows and five national shows, she attempted to get her pro card. She is full-time working and TPA. And originally, she went vegan for animals and loved being a vegan bodybuilder. Let me welcome Sarah Wout. Hi, how are you, girl? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you and thank you for saying yes to this opportunity. So I love to see that you are a vegan bodybuilder. And we're going to talk a lot about this today. But before we let start talking about that, I just want to let everyone know out there a little bit more about you. I hope my introduction was full. But anyways, tell everyone where you're from and what do you do for a living? Yeah, so currently I am living in Tacoma, Washington. Um, I've been here for about two years, but I grew up in California. Um, so I moved up here to be a little closer to my sister. And I work um as a retirement plan administrator for small retirement plans so basically I do accounting and compliance for retirement and then I'm also um an IFBB pro bodybuilder yay that's amazing so when and where did you get your pro card so I got it in 2019 at NPC USA championships um in Las Vegas so um it was my sixth, sixth attempt um, and finally got it. So in 2019. Oh, wow. Cool. And yeah. are you a bikini pro or you are uh, um, the figure. fitness figure? Yes, that's a great thing to mention because I have first figure pro in my uh, podcast. That's so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually started. Um, I started in bikini. Um, and then moved into figure two years after I started. Wow. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about this journey? Um, absolutely. So I started bodybuilding around 2012 and decided to do my first show in 2014. Um, and that was in bikini and, um, it went great. I had a lot of help from just some people I met at the gym. Um, so I did my first couple shows in bikini and, uh, the feedback I received from the judges were just that my legs were too muscular. So I wasn't oh. going to do well in bikini. Um, so I decided to try my first figure show and it went well and, um, just continually got feedback from judges, improved on what I could. Um, and then eventually was able to earn my pro card. Wow. Okay. That's awesome yeah. that you're switched to the other division right in the, you know, in the right time that you wasn't trying to push to something you're not fit. And yeah. I'm really happy to hear this story. So have you had a coach who tell you that, or just the judges feedback, like how you actually find out about this? You know. So, um, had a coach that mentioned that my legs might be a little too muscular for the bikini division. Um, and we wanted to try just to see how it would go. And I did terrible in my bikini show. So afterwards, um, I messaged one of the judges and asked, uh, you know, just be straight with me, <laughs> tell me what I should do. And he just said with the size of my legs, I wasn't going to do well in bikini. Um, and that I should just focus on growing to grow into the figure division. So that's what I did. And it worked out. Awesome. Now let's talk about how you actually find out about veganism in the first place. Yeah, so I um, grew up eating meat. I didn't know much about the vegan lifestyle or anything until um, about 2012. I was living in Colorado and I got a job at a dog daycare importing facility and my boss was a vegan. So mm. and she's fantastic. So she was um, quite the activist. So when we met, she was very outspoken on giving me books and telling me which documentaries to watch. Um, I don't know uh, 
what's okay to say, but the first book I ever read was Skinny B I T C H. <laughs> if you anyone's can ever save read her. Yeah, you can say wherever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so the book title Skinny Bitch, and I read that. Um, and I started discovering what happened in factory farms and what went into animal agriculture. And I think it took like one documentary and I just thought, well, I'm not eating meat anymore. <laughs> so um, I went vegetarian first. And then after I read Skinny Bitch, I said, that's it. I can't do dairy either. So I went vegan and that was December 2012. Wow. Okay. So would you recommend this book to anyone out there who is interesting? Absolutely. And the great thing about Skinny Bitch, um, and I apologize, I can't remember the author's name, um, but it's entertaining. It's really funny. They do use profanity. <laughs> it's a really in your face, hilarious book, but with a lot of great points it's on the dairy industry and animal agriculture. So it's a great way to um, educate, but also be entertaining. That's so fun. I didn't read this one. I have to check this out. It's good. Okay, we're going to add this book in the descriptions down below the podcast, guys, or who watched the video down below the video. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. can I ask you what documentary that was that changed your life? <laughs> um, I believe that one was Forks Over Knives, I think was one of the first one. It was so long ago. I forget what was the very first one I watched um, was the documentary. And then there was other just YouTube videos that she would send me links to. So I can't remember exactly, but they would um, be the really in your face ones about what happened, the graphic videos that, you know, you can see on YouTube. So the documentary was Forks Over Knives. Um, and then just a plethora of YouTube videos was enough. Yeah. It's so interesting. Can I ask you straightforward? Because sometimes I, as a nutritionist, send people videos like that about true vegan and dairy uh, I mean, about true, not vegan, animal agriculture and dairy industry and people who eat lovers or dairy lovers, they sometimes mm. don't take that. They just uh, make aggressive or mm. like they don't like to see that. They just turn off. They don't like to look at that. And they could mm -hmm. say, don't send me that. Like, so how you react and why do you think you actually allow yourself to take it in? Um, that's a great question. Um, I think the reason why a lot of people get really defensive is because our diet can be really ingrained in our personal identities. So when we challenge our diet, we can be challenging someone's character or someone's personality or someone's, um, you know, nostalgia for their past and things like that. Um, I think I was more open to change or looking at, you know, what was really going on because I have had a lot of change throughout my life. And I've always prided myself on changing myself with new information. So I'm not really, you know, there's not really hills I'll die on. Um, if I am presented with new information, I'm open to change in, in any aspect, not just my diet, but um, any kind of beliefs I have. I'm very um, information forward. So uh, it was easier for me to accept that. And one once I started doing the research for myself, it became an intrinsic change. So I didn't feel like she was forcing or my boss was trying to force me to change. I think I felt like she was giving me the information for me to research myself and want to make the change for myself rather than her trying to make me change. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's so good answer. Thank you so much for sharing this. Mm -hmm. And what difficulties did you encounter when you start trying vegan diet? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, so first I'd like to say, I love it now where there's vegan food everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> for those that were vegan back in 2012, it was a little more difficult. And I can't even imagine before that, you know, in the nineties, what kind of food options you had. But um, the difficulty for me was, I think figuring out what to replace meat with. So generally my diet, I would always have some type of meat or fish in my meals. So I just would have to figure out what could I put in place of that? And I think it wasn't so much thinking about what um, nutritionally was comparable. I just felt ingrained in my mind that there had to be an additional thing. So I think it was hard feeling like I had a complete meal without it. So just getting used to just 
taking it out or substituting it was difficult. Um, and then the second piece was probably finding food without milk ingredients. <laughs> I think everything is kind of sprinkled with some type of dairy or some type of fish oil or sauce or something. Isn't so it crazy? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just even like, sometimes it just blow my mind. Like yeah. why you have milk um, substitutes, like let's say in, I don't know, soda, zero calorie soda, like for example, yeah. right? <laughs> why yeah. do you need milk powder and everything yeah yeah <laughs> yeah awesome so, so yeah. yeah I'm sorry keep going I would say I just got really good at reading uh, nutrition labels and ingredients <laughs> yes yes so is your boss or someone else help you to actually find out those you know uh, meat and fish substitutes or maybe uh, you just google research yeah, um, so my boss that had introduced me to veganism was really good about it. Um, when I'd work with her, you know, she would show me what she'd have for lunch or things like that that would really help. And also, um, I feel like I really learned how to cook once I became vegan because, you know, I could, I wanted to substitute with something. So I learned how to make lentils and I learned how to correct cook beans and things like that to make them feel like a whole meal. So um, I think the Google research was a big part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm kind of breaking down. Did you hear me right? Yes. Okay, good. So is your having a coach at that time or you was uh, doing a bodybuilder show? Did you compete in this time of your transition or you went to be bodybuilding after you become vegan? Mm -hmm. So I did. I started bodybuilding after I became vegan um, and I did have a coach who helped me a little bit with my diet. Um, it was the first time he had helped a vegan or a vegetarian do a diet for a bodybuilding plan. And the way we did it is we kind of took a traditional bodybuilder diet and just substituted the chicken for tofu or the fish for seitan. Um, and that worked out really well. And it really helped me discover that I can do well with carbs. So we kind of just relied heavily on carb sources and tofu so <laughs> it was a real trial and error in the beginning but um yeah he was good about helping me awesome and mm -hmm. like did you feel anything uh behind the scene in bodybuilding when especially in uh figure when people realize that you are vegan did you did feel, feel like, like anything about questions how you manage that how you actually can build the muscles and stuff like that? Absolutely. <laughs> I know um, probably every vegan or vegetarian gets the question, where do you get your protein? And I feel like as a bodybuilder, you get it three times as much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which when I first became um, vegan, I felt it would, it was an old question, right? Like how, where do you get your protein? Where do you get your protein? But um now and I just see it as an opportunity to educate um and I take it as a good thing when someone asks me because they're interested in veganism um but yes that was a really interesting um when I started doing well in bodybuilding people wouldn't know I was vegan or we'd I'd introduce myself and they didn't know I was vegan so we'd talk about bodybuilding and then they'd find out and it's a great way to transition someone's thinking you know if being able to see someone that's doing well and say, oh, plus she's vegan, you can do it. It's a possibility. So I've really tried to take that as a positive that I like surprising people. Yes, I like that mm -hmm. idea too. I like that you're not pushing straight forward. You're not this type of vegans who are trying to, you know, teach everyone how to live their lives. This is, I don't mm -hmm. really appreciate. So that's amazing. Did you feel any changes in your health, in your performance in the gym? overall feeling when you transitioned to veganism? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think I lost 10 pounds the first month that I cut me out of my diet. Um, I, I slept better. I, my energy was better. Uh, my mood was better. Um, so that immediately, I think that those are the things that I noticed. And then I've also noticed, um, my endurance in the gym, um, because I became a bodybuilder after I was vegan, I can't compare what it was like if I was a bodybuilder that ate meat versus not. 
So I own not eating meat. However, where my endurance to um, other people I lift with or other people I work out with, I notice that can kind of go a little bit longer or, you know, I'm ready to jump back inside a little bit quicker. Um, so I think it has really helped my endurance and my recovery. Yeah. That's common thing that I heard all the time when I interview a vegan athlete. So I guess we have to do research about this because no one is won it. <laughs> or maybe kind of like <laughs> give a couple bucks to the research about that because it's really truth. And the new movie, which just came out um, last year about vegan athletes, how you call it? Um, oh, the game changer. Yes, that the game changer mm -hmm. is really changed the game for a lot of people out there who are in fitness industry. So mm -hmm. I'm happy that you also feel this, you know, benefits. But in the mm -hmm. same time, have you substitute with some supplementation when you became a bodybuilder? What supplements do you actually start taking as a vegan athlete? Yeah, um, so the supplements I, I do take I do take a vegan protein. Um, I don't say that it's because I'm vegan though, because if you speak with a bodybuilder that eats meat, they also take protein supplements. So it's just, um, I just do the vegan version. Um, I do take B12, but I believe that everyone is usually deficient in B12 based on how we wash our vegetables and how our food is prepared these days. I don't feel like that's vegan specific. Um, I do take multivitamins. Um, creatine is one thing that I take. There's nothing very specific that I take because I'm a vegan. Um, just your general multivitamin. I take iron, things like that. Okay, perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. I think that's a great information to people out there. You don't need to have a bunch of supplements if you're trying to be vegan. Just straightforward, since we already talked about proteins, can you tell us your top five favorite vegan protein sources? Yeah, um, so seitan is probably my favorite. Are you talking about whole foods or powders? Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, um, so seitan is my favorite and I actually make my own. So um, I make, I eat it twice a day. Um, and then I would say my second favorite would probably be tofu. I eat tofu um, eight ounces a day. And then I also like tempeh. Um, I do try to get protein from vegetable sources like broccoli, um, lentils I really like. And then if I was gonna go into the protein powders, um, I do soy isolate, so that's the one I go to. <clears throat> but I also like, um, Potato protein surprisingly has a great amino acid profile. Um, and I like hemp. Nice. Thank you. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to look in your diet, can you mm -hmm. tell us, for example, just an example, one of your favorite high protein meals per day? Yeah. Um, so my favorite meal right now is probably my seitan. So I do three quarter cup of seitan. So I make it with vital wheat gluten. So it's about, I think 56 grams of protein. Um, and then I do Brussels sprouts and then, uh, some white rice. That's so simple, but so healthy. <laughs> nice. And I do make my own seitan too. So I feel you girl. I actually mm -hmm. use the recipe. I have it on my YouTube. I'm, I'm wondering, what do you put in your seitan? What is your ingredients? Yeah. So, what? um, mine's pretty simple. <laughs> I do, um, veggie broth, uh, liquid smoke. Sometimes I'll add in tomato paste and then, um, some type of bouillon. So mm -hmm. I think usually that's it. And then just water and then vital wheat gluten. And then uh, I bake mine um, to make little sausage rolls. I have to try that. This is incredible. It's totally different recipe than mine. You have to check my recipe. I put, um, <laughs> I put, I put nutrition yeast and I put lupini flour oh. and uh, wheat gluten. And I mix it with also li liquid aminos and water and I bake it, mm -hmm. but no borscht. So it's more like... Um, it's like, I think it's going to be more on a harder side than yours. Yeah. 
That's Sounds awesome. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're going to try that. And you guys, if you're interested to see those recipes, do you post your recipes somewhere, Sarah? Yeah, I have them on my Instagram. I think awesome. I, yeah, I have them highlighted on Instagram. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Yes, we're going to add your Instagram and all your description information down below on the video or on the audio version, wherever guys you are listening or but if you don't watch, you should because Sarah looks amazing. Can I ask how old are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm 32. So I'll turn 33 in November. No way. Okay. Mm -hmm. No way. You look really, really young. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's got to be helped with the veganism. <laughs> yeah, I think too. So can I ask you also, are you a natural athlete? Yes. Awesome. And do you actually believe in, you know, professional lever nature bodybuilding? Oh, sorry, you broke up. Do I believe what? Yeah, I'm sorry. I said, do you actually believe in natural bodybuilding on a professional level? Yes, it's hard competitively. So um, I, I think there, there are natural federations, I think, that are awesome. Um, I believe there's a really big one in Dallas. There's a show um, that's for natural athletes that I think has a large amount of vegan competitors. I think it's kind of one that all the vegan competitors try to do every year. And I, I'm blinking on the name of the federation, but um, yeah, I think natural bodybuilding federations are great. Okay, but I was actually asking about uh, even IVB Pro, like, do you believe like a vegan nature athlete possibly could be an IVB Olympia champion? Yeah, I think it's possible. Uh, I think difficult. Um, so I think really time will tell. Um, in bikini and figure, I think it, it's possible. I think in the bigger divisions, it might be a, a little bit harder, <laughs> but I think for those two, it's possible. Why do you think it's harder? Um, putting that kind of muscle mass on for vegan or uh, meat eating, I think is probably um, pretty difficult to be competitive, especially because I think most of most to all of the competitors at that, that, that level are gonna be not natural. So you're going to be going against people that um, just are enhanced and have that upper hand. Yeah, I feel you. I know what you mean exactly. So when you were got your pro card, you was a nature athlete. So how did you feel that time when you got your pro card? Do you remember? Oh, I cried. <laughs> it, uh, especially just trying so many times. Um, and I had placed second and third at national shows where I just didn't get it. Um, so the second I got backstage, I think I just sat there and cried for five minutes. <laughs> was, it, was, it was an incredible feeling. Wow. So mm -hmm. when is your next show? Do you know? I don't have one planned. I normally try to do them every year, um, but I'm going to take probably the next 10 to 12 months off and try to get bigger because that's been my feedback is just to put on more muscle mass. So we'll do that for about a year um, and then maybe around this time next year, I'll try one. I love it. So as a natural bodybuilder, as you can hear guys, she's going to take a one year off at least one year to put muscles mm -hmm. on. And that's what it takes, right? So you usually take about a year off your seasons between the show or how you usually, you know, manage that. Yeah. So I, um, typically I've been doing around eight months between shows and my feedback has kind of been consistently to put on more muscle. So just, we decided this next year, we're going to take a lot more time and allow for that growth and just not rush into a prep again. So, um, we'll kind of re re, um, see how everything looks maybe around next summer. And if we feel that I've put on enough muscle, we'll try for a show, but if not, then I'll just keep growing. Amazing. I love that. So how you deal with the struggle when you go out of your season and you have to put your muscles on, you have to put body fat on too. Mm -hmm. And me being a coach, sometimes it's really hard to deal with the clients who don't understand that. So how you deal with mm -hmm. yourself, do you feel like it's hard for you to gain weight or it comes to you naturally easy? 
So it's varied throughout my years competing. When I first started, um, and you're right, it's, I usually say that that's probably the hardest part of bodybuilding. It's not the diet or going into the gym. It's the three weeks after a show and being okay with the weight gain. Um, so when I first started competing, it was really difficult for me. Um, I would get anxiety and, um, I actually developed binge eating my, after my first couple of shows that took a little bit to get out of it. And luckily I had great coaches and great friends and family that helped me with that. Um, the last two years, it's been a little bit easier because I stick to a diet year round. So I, um, I make sure I just have structure around my diet, but for anyone that's dealing with that, I think it's really important to know that everybody does like it's not uncommon it's not something to be ashamed of um i saw a therapist once for it that really helped um but it just takes really just being kind to yourself knowing that it's going to happen i think preparation is important for those things um communication with your coach i'm sure um there's a lot of people that might be scared to tell you they're dealing with something like that but the more communication you have with your coach they can help you Yes, I agree with you. Absolutely. So can I ask you to share a little more about your binge eating struggle and how you actually deal with that just for someone who may have the same problem right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it would be, I think the worst part of it is so after a show, you don't have a set goal anymore. So it's really hard to remain strict. So for me, I would have binge eating um, because I was so restrictive in a prep. And the big feeling around binge eating is a loss of control. And I think somebody that hasn't experienced that, it's hard to describe. Um, so you'll just keep eating. And the hard part is that loss of control. Um, so what I've done is I'll kind of try and identify what emotion I'm having while I'm binge eating or what kind of triggers that. Um, and a lot of times it's if I'm bored or if I'm stressed out and then I'll start eating or something like that. So I try to identify the motion first so I can stop myself from doing that. Also, I know myself pretty well that I have trigger foods. So if there's something I have one of, it's really hard to stop. Um, so I just keep those out of my house, out of my diet, and it really helps. Um, so I think those are probably the two biggest things that have helped me and just reminding myself that it's okay. If it happens, it's happened, let it go, get past it, do better tomorrow. So it's not something to harp on and really feel bad about yourself because it doesn't help. Yes. I love this answer. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was amazing. And what yeah. advice you may give someone who trying to pursue the similar career as yours, want to become a bodybuilding professional and, you know, they don't know how to start. So do you have any advice? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the first thing is to just know um, what to expect. So when you get into bodybuilding, I think the biggest things are consistency and understanding it's going to take a long time. Um, but once you get into the lifestyle, it's you, you start seeing the gains and you start seeing the progress and it gets a little addicting. But I think the biggest thing is just to remember consistency. It's not glamorous. It's going to be probably the same thing day in, day out. You tend to eat the same foods. You work out every day, a couple, you know, um, five days a week. So it's, it's not glamorous. Just know that you have to grind. You really have to work hard. Um, but it's so rewarding. I mean, your health is, is definitely number one. Um, and I feel like bodybuilding really gives people um, a confidence that you can have in your life that translates to a lot of other aspects. So I know for myself, it's, it's helped me develop the confidence to achieve other things. Um, so if it's something you're considering, just try it, you know, start with a little thing, start with a diet, start with a workout regimen, find someone that has done it before, ask them questions. I mean, people love to share that kind of knowledge. Um, don't be intimidated in a gym. I, I, we've all started from the beginning. So we all are open to help. Absolutely. Yes. And actually, if someone is going to be interested to work with you, as I know, mm -hmm. you're become a coach now too. Am mm -hmm. I right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I've done a little bit of coaching um, back in 2013 and 14. And then I took a long time off just because I wanted to improve my knowledge. So when I'm helping someone, I can really help someone. Um, so now I feel like I would love to share that. 
Um, and I've, I've been doing posing coaching for um, a while now, but I also want to get into helping with the diets and the workouts, and things like that. Nice. Do you do posing only for, uh, uh, for your division or for any division? Currently just figure, but um, I will be doing probably wellness and bikini eventually. Nice. Awesome to know. So how our listeners, listeners can find you? Yeah, so, so I um, Instagram is the best way to get a hold of me. It's Sarah Joan underscore IFBB Pro um, and Sarah S-A-R-A-H. Perfect. Yes. And I will type it down in the description below, guys, so you can easily find Sarge. And before I let you go, I have a one last question where I ask everyone, if that's going to be the last day for your life and this planet, what are you going to do? I'm going to bring all of my family together with my nieces and my parents and go to the lake. I think I just want to spend time with them. Wow, oh, this is so incredible. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And I have a small game I play with everyone. So I got to okay. say two words. You have to choose one. Are you ready? Ready. Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Black or purple? Black. Gym or outdoor workouts? Gym. Beach or mountains? Beach. Juicy, uh, I mean, juice or smoothie? Uh, smoothie. Wine or water? Water. Chocolate or sweet cream? Chocolate. Kiss or hug? Kiss. Love or sex? Sex. <laughs> oh my God, that was amazing. Thank you so much for honest answers. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun yeah i love this small game to let you know a little bit better you know what is in your mind before you go do you want to say anything else for our listeners wherever is in your mind share it yeah um thank you so much for listening it's been like such an honor to be able to speak with you um i think it's amazing what you're doing and sharing um your experience and working with others and i think a message that i have is just if you are curious about veganism or anything, um, start, I mean, just start in small, right? Um, anything helps, right? If you just switch to uh, non-dairy milk instead of regular milk, it's the small things that matter. Um, just try it, ask questions. Uh, I think it really could improve your life. So thank you for listening and thank you for having me. Yes, of course. Uh, you're very welcome and thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And I know we have talked more. We can, you know, keep going, but I don't want to take any more of your time. So we may going to come back, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today and have an amazing rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.